with uh, Gene Davison, CEO of Fair Logics. Uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to know a little bit more um, about the uh, technology we, which is behind the uh, the, uh, the flights that we uh, book uh, uh, every day. And uh, first uh, question as we, uh, what a company like uh, Fair Logic does? Well, yeah, what we do is, I think you, you set it up very well, Javier, is, is we actually provide, in a, in a very simplified term, the plumbing behind uh, when people start looking for, uh, for flights. And so we actually connect into airline reservation systems and we bring that information in a very usable format to a variety of front ends, either in the travel agency, the OTA space, airline websites. So we do all the things that happen behind the scene when a traveler says, hey, I might like to take a trip from Miami to Madrid. And uh, you call it's an end-to-end -end process, or uh, you cover different phases, and depending on the needs of your clients, uh, you provide different services. Yeah, right? it's it's most of it's an end-to-end -end around the the initial search, the booking, and then what we call the post-booking. So if there's changes, a traveler makes a change, or all of a sudden there's one less traveler going, uh, there's refunds, there's cancellations, there's exchanges. So we do the end-to-end -end as it relates to from the time you begin your search to the time actually you get on the airplane. Uh -huh. So your uh, main uh, clients are obviously online travel agencies and these kind of companies? Actually, our main clients are the airlines, airlines who service those. So the airlines, American Airlines, United, Lufthansa, Emirates, uh, we have a number of, uh, of uh, airline companies that use our distribution services. The, the most interesting thing I think as you're seeing is while you've got that infrastructure behind uh, between the airline reservation system and the online travel or the travel agency, now the airlines are wanting to actually deliver more product and services. So a lot of the things we're starting to hear about, uh, advanced boarding passes, extra leg room, um, we're really focusing on that kind of technology to bring that to the consumer. So you are the technological company which makes possible that these new ancillary services yes. and these new products uh, can be bookable yes. by, yes. by third Not parties. the only one, but we'd like to think we're one of the one of the, <laughs> well, the, actually ones, one of no. the most relevant that's, yeah, so, uh, that, that's uh, yeah, sure. because it is an area that, uh, that actually, which is interesting, both airlines need to do this and consumers actually want to buy these products. So you're seeing that in terms of just the the year-over-year -year numbers of what the ancillary revenue is generating for airlines, it's almost up 50% from last year. So this is a big deal for airlines, this is a big deal for consumers, both leisure and corporate. So my, might be your, the main difference between a company like, uh, like for Logix and for instance Amadeus is that Amadeus is not only focused on technology, but also focused on distribution right. itself. Right, they actually manage the travel agency relationship, so we, we uh, and, and obviously they're much bigger than we are, <laughs> but a great company, uh, but we've, yeah, we focus, both focus on airline solutions, they take it one step further in actually creating a network of travel agencies. Actually, you were most similar to ITA before it was bought by Google. Right, we, and, and I have a background with Amadeus as well. So, uh, uh, yeah, when, uh, when ITA, we, uh, we would actually compete with ITA for some of the airline services, the pricing engines and the, the uh, merchandising engines. Um, not so much anymore. Um, I think Google and ITA are focusing more on search, uh, where we actually focus on the full transaction. Um, and I don't know that the, fl the flight search wants to get into the full transaction. I think they want to stay consistent with the, with the model of Google, which is we'll give you the information of the search and then we'll send you on your way. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you face the challenge of uh, managing the low cost, uh, or the fares of the low cost companies? Yeah, well, they're, they're, uh, the, the fares are expanding every day. So the big challenge is, is how you um, uh, particularly for the traveler, if he's going on or she's going on a business trip, how do you make sure you get the right fares to that traveler without having them to sort through hundreds of thousands of fares? So that is becoming more and more of a challenge for any of the technology companies that uh, want to bring relevant information to the traveler. And uh, uh, what's the role that you foresee for the meta search in this uh, newest scenario that we're yeah, in? I, uh, uh, again, I think the, the MetaSearch role is, is one that's really consumer friendly. And uh, so, I, I, again, I don't think you're going to have a lot of MetaSearch companies out there, but I think you're going to have the ones that are out there continue to grow their presence, uh, expand the offers that they create. The MetaSearches now you see are already getting into instant booking capabilities. So that means they're trying to develop a tighter relationship with their customers. They just don't want to be a referral. They actually want to have a, a relationship through the transaction with you. 
think that'll be very interesting is more and more products are available after the initial booking. So check-in, advanced seat boarding, uh, extra leg room. I see the MetaSearch is getting more into being a provider of those services as well. But I understand for what you say is that uh, um, MetaSearch, though it's uh, considered as a technology, uh, technology company, actually is more focused on the marketing side. Right. They are experts in yeah. acquisition of yeah. clients and yep. user interface, but actually they are not doing the plumbing. Well, so. yeah, that's right. Well, hopefully they'll, they'll actually use companies like ours to do the plumbing <laughs> and they expand that marketing footprint. Um, the, the reality is that they are going to adopt more and more technologies that their consumers want. So if their consumers actually want to do a transaction with a MetaSearch company, with a Kayak, uh, with that brand, then my guess is that those MetaSearch companies will find that technology. Not that they'll build it themselves, but they'll find it. What do you think about the initiative of uh, IETA? about these common standards. Uh, right, that are right. I, I, <laughs> the NDC standards. The NDC standard, um, yeah. I think it's a, it's a lot to do about nothing, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, but it's created quite a, quite a, a stir in the industry. Yeah. Uh, it's really about a standards. And, and the, the, what's happening now is because airlines want to sell more than just a schedule, there needs to be more standardization of how you connect to the airlines to get products such as meal service, and boarding passes, and seats with prices on them. IATA is attempting to try to get a standard very similar to how they did, gosh, almost 20 years ago with mm -hmm. the e-ticket. So uh, I think uh, next year at Focus Right, you'll be seeing not much about NDC. Yeah, they'll be it's, moved it's on. disappearing. They'll uh, be delivering all these kind of wonderful <laughs> products and services. That's correct. So um, last question. Uh, how do you think the travel uh, industry will be in five years uh, oh, wow. from now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a difficult one. Well, I wish I knew because uh, <laughs> we could all make some money. That's um, good. <laughs> I, you know, I, think the, I think the challenge over the next five years is, is the device of which you interact with your travel provider is going to be your mobile device. So your, your telephone, your iPad, your, your, um, your, your tablet. So I think the big challenge for the providers is to create an experience that, that is on the run. And um, so I think that's where most of the investment is going to be. Well, I said it was the last question, but it was not true. <laughs> I didn't resist to ask uh, if uh, you have clients, uh, you were mentioning uh, different airlines uh, like Lufthansa and Emirates. Now Emirates again, it's uh, on the, in the news because it's uh, older and uh, amazing amount of uh, planes. Uh, um, do you see many differences in the, in the way a company like Lufthansa or uh, other legacy carriers are uh, uh, managed, and the new uh, yes, incumbents yeah. like Emirates or Qatar. Yeah, I, you know what, what I what I see mostly is that airlines now are really focusing on what their product and what their brand is. So Emirates, for example, particularly in their business and first class, is a very high premium brand and long haul. They they really focus on on catering to that customer that wants that high premium service. Other airlines may be more domestic in nature and more focused on just costs, such as some of the low cost carriers. So what I think is happening now is because there's so much differences between the airlines, the challenge is, is how do the technology companies actually convey that to the consumer and actually let them transact on what they want. So if somebody wants a premium product, we ought to be able to send them a premium product such as Emirates, show them a picture of the seat, show them a picture of the meal versus a low-cost carrier where basically just show them the lowest price. So uh, we can say that these new large companies are embracing technology as one of the elements of their success. Uh, yeah, I, th I don't think there's a company out there in our space that isn't using technology and it will have an impact on their success or failure. Uh, we know that uh, legacy carriers for many years have considered the investment in technology as a burden. They, yeah, they, it's, they know it's, it is, uh, it's imp they had to do it, but they were not happy. You, you had to do it, but what you did is you did the minimal amount. I think now airlines are realizing, particularly because they're seeing some profitability, primarily through ancillaries and, and how they bundle their products, uh, that they're going to continue to invest in, in technology that does that better and actually attracts more customers for them. Uh, do you think that uh, the growth in the airline uh, industry will keep on the area of the Middle East uh, and uh, in Asia, or will we will see uh, Latin America as well uh, grow in uh, Oh, it's already uh, reached the limit yeah, with um, time and land. Yeah, Asia, I think, particularly China, is, I mean, I, I read somewhere, I don't remember how many new airports they're building over the next five years. That means a lot more traffic. Um, South America, I think, is, is kind of heading towards the peak. 
Um, but I think they're going to redefine themselves. So anywhere the population is growing, you're going to see uh, more traffic from airlines. And we normally forget about Africa, and uh, if someone's so smart as Soristelius uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, running a risk with fast years, there yes. might yeah. be, we have to reconsider that. What's your opinion about the opportunities yeah, in Africa? Yeah, look, I think Africa is, is the untapped market right now. And we talk, we talk, like you say, we talk about Brazil and China and the BRIC countries. Uh, the African nations actually represent a huge growth opportunity. Uh, Ethiopian is one of our, our newest and fastest growing airlines. Okay. Mr. Jim, thanks a lot for My your insight. Always interesting and uh, best luck for the future. Thank you. <laughs>